Being an MSL is incredibly rewarding job. But like any other job, it comes with its own challenges. One of the most common challenges that face MSLs is career stagnation. Many MSLs find themselves in the same role for many years, dreaming of a promotion that will never happen. Why it will never happen? Because they are not taking the right steps in order for it to happen. In this tutorial, I will share with you two real life stories and we can conclude from them what went wrong and learn what steps that we can take today in order to advance our career. So let's start with the first story. The first story happened to me years ago, but it's still happening. It's very common. It started one day early morning when I received an email from a medical colleague. English was not his first language, but he had clearly put a lot of effort into writing this email. He was very proud. He was very excited about a major achievement. And he had copied all the right people, including the senior leadership in the organization, and was only expecting recognition and appreciation. His excitement at the end of the day turned into frustration. He felt ignored and unappreciated. But there were key lessons from this story. The email was long and it was still early in the morning, so I flagged it to read it later. And finally, when I got to it, I understood why no one responded. Why no one recognized the colleague who was very engaged, very excited and proud of his achievement. Why? Because first, the initiative was not aligned with the business strategies. Second, the email was too lengthy and the achievement he was talking about in his message was not even considered an achievement. So an example that started with excitement and ended with frustration. He felt ignored and probably unappreciated. There are two right steps that were not taken in this story. First, understanding the business strategies and two effective business communication and these are two important steps that we need to take in order to advance our career let's go to the second story and then we will wrap it all up the second story didn't happen to me but i was there and witnessed one of our best medical affairs leaders was on the fast track to be promoted when this event took place. Everyone recognized his exceptional skills and dedication. During a critical business review in his country, he was asked a simple, straightforward question about the business size of the area that he is medically supporting. To everyone's surprise, he didn't answer. The room felt silent. This moment created a very negative impression that stayed for a long time. Despite his medical expertise and his previous achievements, this one oversight highlighted a significant gap in his knowledge, his understanding of, and his understanding of his rule and the moment created a negative impression not only for him but for the entire team because no one else stepped up to answer the question obviously no one in the medical affairs team in this story was aware about the business size of the, this disease area or this uh, geographical area and this highlighted for the senior leaders a collective gap in business acumen. 
So despite the medical expertise of the colleague, despite his previous achievements, that this oversight, small oversight, highlighted a gap. And it was reflected poorly on the whole team. Senior leaders were taken aback. They expected a well-rounded grasp of both medical and business insights, but it didn't happen. This incident highlights another important learning, which is business acumen. It was not just about science, by the way. It was about understanding the numbers, the impact, and the broader context of the business. Now, let's wrap it all up. And let's try to see what were the right steps that our medical colleagues in the two stories didn't take. In the first story, the colleague didn't align his initiative with the organizational business goals. Probably that's why when he saw he did something to be recognized for, his managers apparently didn't see the value of what he did and probably thought of it as a waste of time and resources. So there was no alignment with the business goals. And also, his lengthy email reflected a below-average style of communication, especially when he was targeting senior leaders who usually don't spend a lot of time reading long messages. In the other story, the colleague, despite the high scientific acumen, despite his previous accomplishment, failed to answer a simple, straightforward commercial question about the size of business he was supporting. And what added to this is that no one in his team was able to provide the answer, which reflected poor business acumen. And this brings us to the three main learnings out of these two stories. First is the importance of strategic thinking for medical affairs colleagues. Two, the importance of having effective business communication and enhancing our skills in this important domain. Three, the importance of business acumen in addition to our scientific acumen. And I will leave you with six important recommendations that would enable us to avoid similar situations in the future. Field medical teams and for medical affairs colleagues in general. Always align your objectives, your goals, and your activities with the broader business goals. And you have to do this alignment before and not after doing initiatives. Two, work and invest more to upgrade your communication style to be more effective and impactful and also more suitable to today's communication world. Also invest time to learn and develop strategic thinking skills because strategic thinking skills will enable you to always align your activities and initiatives with the business goals or the overall broader business objectives. Focus on the business impact and think of it before launching any new initiative, not after it, again. So if you embark to do any medical initiative, ask yourself in the very beginning, in the planning phase, how will be the business impact of this initiative? And make sure that it is aligned with the leadership expectations and with the overall business objectives. The fifth recommendation is to develop strong business acumen to complement your scientific expertise. You remember we said before that scientific acumen alone doesn't make an industry, doesn't make a pharmaceutical industry. What makes the pharmaceutical industry is both the science and the business. So always leverage this and learn more about the business acumen, understand all the details your commercial colleagues know about the product or about the category or about certain territory in your responsibility. And finally, 
never present scientific information without considering its business implications. Don't tell colleagues in your team or in the commercial team about science and stop there. You need to continue the sentence and link the value that science brings to the table. So how we are designed in order to bridge the gap between science and business, that's a real demonstration of what we should do. We should turn our scientific expertise and knowledge about certain topic into a business language so our colleagues would understand it and probably take the necessary actions accordingly. And when you do all these things, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid this is not the end of the story. This is not the uh, end of the road. You need to continue learning more competences in order to be able to climb your career ladder. So having a good command of strategy, an excellent business acumen, and effective communication are only factors that will help you to do your job effectively. Being the best MSL in your organization doesn't justify that you can do the role of a manager or a role of a director or any other role in the industry. So being a good MSL is being a good MSL. You need to bring something extra to the table. In order to complete the picture, you need to demonstrate or showcase your competencies and skills in other areas. For example, if you are a medical science liaison and you aspire to be a manager, you need to show your competencies and skills in management and leadership. If you want to do a different role in the industry, you need to demonstrate and showcase your strategic imperatives and strategies and how skillful you are in this domain. So this will be the topic for our next tutorial. But for now, you have to demonstrate success and excellence in what you do. Being an MSL, you need to add these three pillars to your scientific acumen. Strategic thinking, business acumen, and effective business communication. I hope that you enjoyed the insights that we shared today and see you soon. Have a nice week.